Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and as you can probably guess we're going to continue working on with the uh, repair of this Zen of 286 which has got the rather nasty battery damage around here as you saw in the uh, previous video on this so basically the first thing I need to do before I can really tackle any of this uh, is remove everything in this area and then we can cl really clean it down we can inspect all the tracers and we can repair any damage we find to the tracers and then we can start repopulating this part of the board and hopefully fingers crossed that should get us um, get us going again well the first thing I want to do is remove some of these big things which I want to try and um, recover and reuse so I want to take that connector off there and I want to take that um, 5 pin DIN connector for the keyboard off now that to be honest if that's shot it's not the end of the world we can uh, replace that with a, a new one but it is quite a nice one and I love the way that it's actually screwed to the board there rather than um, normal which has solder tags so if we did replace it with a standard one it wouldn't quite fit as well as um, as well as that one does even though it would actually work first thing we'll do is see if we can get that power connector there off because um, I want to see if I can stick that and possibly that as well in my ultrasonic cleaner and see if we can um, clean them up that way anyway I've got the soldering iron set up uh, that's up at 360 degrees and I've got the desoldering station um, fired up as well that's up at 480 degrees um, I've been having some fun with the um, desoldering station which I'll, I'll will go into It's um, one of the parts in it has basically worn out. I've ordered um, a new part for it, but I've come to get come up with a bodge for now to um, get it working for um, doing this board and using some of this stuff. That's uh, plumber's PTFE tape. I managed to um, sort the issue out with the desoldering station with that. Um, anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm um, going to put some fresh solder. Um, basically onto these pins on that is not taking solder very nicely I want to put some fresh solder these are really not wanting to take solder either but basically fresh solder on all these pins if you can no, it's not wanting to take solder very well. So the solder is like really has crystallised. Um, whatever the chemical reaction that's been created by um, the the um, battery leakage has uh, really affected this solder. So we can get some nice fresh leaded solder to flow in there. It will hopefully help us get the. Uh, get the connector off and I'm not too worried on bridging connections and flowing loads of solder on here because I'm going to be sucking it all off in a second what I really do want to happen though is for um, as, much of, as much of this new solder to flow in with the old solder and um, with luck it should help uh, help get it off Here, last one. I'll just hold, just heat each one of them up. So we're trying to really get this new flow, solder we've just added to flow in with that old solder, which uh, because it wasn't flowing very nicely. Right there we go. Right, okay. Let me get you zoomed down a little bit so you can see a bit better what's um, what's going on. Come on camera. I think my uh, remote control needs a new battery in it. Let me just see if I can uh, zoom you in the old fashioned way. There we go. That's better. Note to self, need new battery for my, uh, for my remote control. Right. Let's give this a um, try and see how well this is going to um, desolder. Hopefully, you can see what's going on. Let's see if I 
can just hold the board at an angle, you might be able to see it a little bit better. We'll go on there, heat it up, move it around a bit, and have a sock. Okay, we'll take a look at that and see how uh, see how well we've done for that first that first suck in there. Alright, let's see what we can see. There's still a few um where are my little uh, oh there they are. Little pliers. I think there's still a few um, attached there, but what we'll do is we'll go in with the pliers. Just give them a little wiggle. You can see some there that are still well, well attached. They've still got plenty of sold around them. So we'll just go in again. of all of the um, pins like that in one and just give them a, a bit of a wiggle like that make sure we can break them free then we can go in that way as well Just trying to get the um, last bits of solder basically to break free. They probably heard a few of them um, free off them that were still stuck. But there's still one or two on there which aren't quite wanting to break free yet. Let's. Uh, most of those are free. We'll just spin the board round and we'll try it the other way. board over and let's see how well we're doing there. So. You can feel that most of the pins are free. In fact, I think we're free there. We're just, uh, there we go. Just gently move it round. We're not using any pulling force there. We're just gently whittling it backwards and forwards. There we go, and that's out. Don't seem to have done. I've lost a couple of pins there by the look of it. So we'll have to see what we can do with that. You can see the corrosion though. This is why we had to take that and just get you down a little bit. 
I'll zoom you in a little bit. Th this is literally why we had to take that connector off there. There was no, uh, there was no leaving that connector on. Because this is the, you know, this is the corrosion that we're dealing with underneath it. In fact, let's get a little bit of IPA on that and um, just have a quick clean up and let's see what we've, uh, let's see what we've got. So we'll give it a quick spritz of the IPA. Dear me, this is bad. Look at that. Perhaps get a little bit of white vinegar in there, just see if we've got any um, alkali that we need to deal with. I won't go mad with it, I'll just get a little bit on um, a Q-tip. And wipe that over. If nothing else, it actually helps to uh, to lift some of the crud off the board. You can see it's actually coming up okay. And amazingly, these traces don't look too terrible. I mean, we won't know until we can do some continuity checks once we've got all this off. We'll actually do some continuity checks on, um, on the traces on this board, but... So far, it looks like, amazingly, the copper seems to have survived. It seems to be the metal parts which have um, really suffered badly. Just get a little bit of IPA on there and just give it a quick wipe down. Incidentally, if you're ever um, getting rid of an old um, first aid kit, lots of them have um, bottles of IPA in them. A friend of mine um, who was clearing some old um, first aid kits out at work and they were going in the skip, so he, um, he grabbed one of the bottles of IPA out of them for me. And this is 99.9% well, .9 pure as well, it's the, like, the best, purest IPA you can get. So um, worth looking out for if you see old um, first aid kits being chucked away. Um, just see if they've got a bottle of IPA in them you can use. I mean, obviously I wouldn't recommend it for uh, medical use because they're expired or what have you, but uh, for electrical work it's absolutely fine. Right, that's starting to look a bit better now. Have a look at that now. And let's have an actual look at the um, connector we've removed as well. Oops, right there we go. Get that in shot for you. There we are. So it appears we've lost. <coughs> excuse me, we've lost what? One, two, three, four of the um, pins off the uh, off the bottom. Another feeling it was just due to actual corrosion. It was lost, lost one there, one there one there and one there. Um, what I'm hoping we can do is push these pins out from the inside in there and either repair them with a little piece of wire and put a new pin on the end or indeed I might even have some of these pins somewhere either in another connector or in a bag of pins and be able to just replace them outright. Um, in fact what I'll do now because this is absolutely filthy um, I'll go and get my ultrasonic cleaner and we will um, We'll throw this, um, might, I might just whip that um, DIN connector off as well and we'll throw these in the um, ultrasonic cleaner and see what we can do with them. So, uh, back in a sec. Right, okay, well I've got the little um, ultrasonic set up. I thought before we start using that and stick the connector in it, uh, let's get 
that DIN connector off, um, and we can stick that in the ultrasonic at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do before I just start whipping that off there, because they obviously made some kind of mod, you know, um, like in-house mod, and I think one of the pins on this is lifted, and we've got um, a diode across it. We've got one of the um, chokes, I presume it's a choke or a coil there, um, which should be, I think, located on the board, has been lifted off the board and is connected through a resistor. So obviously they've done a little bit of rework around there um, on the boards, um, which I'll have to replicate, obviously, when I put this back, because I presume that's been done for a purpose. So what I've got, I've got um, an old iPhone here. Um, and what I'll do, these are handy to keep around just for this kind of um, just for this kind of purpose. To be fair, we'll take um, we'll take some pictures, some nice detailed photographs of um, basically how all this is how all this is connected up. Put something on the lens of this just a sec. Just to uh, bear with us a second, folks. There was something there. There was something on the lens of the camera then. It weren't giving a very good picture. That's better. Now let's try that again. There we go. So we can get a right, a nice detailed close up of exactly how all that is connected up on the board there. In fact, while I'm in here, I might as well do uh, like these resistors. And I'm just getting a, a, basically a good overall when I start taking these off. Um, and I'm not 100% sure where something goes back. Obviously, I can refer back to these. Uh, I can refer back to these pictures. I think that should do us right. Let's look at taking that connector off next. Now, I do notice we've got two screws there that we need to take out. Let's get them out first. So it's the first time I've come across a DIN plug that's actually uh, screw to the main board rather than just having two little um, tags um, bent over. Now I also took the opportunity to swap out the very large um, tip I had on my um, desoldering station what we used to take that connector off there <coughs> to actually the smallest um, the smallest nozzle that I have on here, which should be a little bit better for uh, taking these off. So uh, let's see how well these are going to come out. Oh, actually, quite nicely. This might come off fairly easily, hopefully. They actually came out well, quite nicely actually. I just realised I haven't put my own back on there. Right, is that loose now? I wonder if I'm going to have to. Uh... Ah, yes, indeed. As well as being well, as well said as well. Sorry as being screwed down. It is actually also I've got two little pins that go through the board there um, and through this bit of grounding so we're going to have to take that off as well. I'm just let uh, I think I might have to add a little bit of extra solder and a little bit of fresh flux just to get that off. And I will crank my uh, I'll crank my iron a little bit higher as well. Add a little bit of fresh flux to that. It'll just help the um, 
the soil just start to flow. There's a little bit of flux on there. Oops, bring that out because I need that. Get the old soldering iron out. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder here. I have a feeling we're going to have some fun to. Uh, we've got to get basically lift this solder. Oh, look. Oh, look at that. That was nice and easy, weren't it? Because we'll want to put that back after. But that's exposed those two little connections there. Let's see if we can uh, get those out with the uh, desoldering gun. Free. See, it's not the end of the world if this connect we can't do anything with the connector but I like the fact that it's screwed down like that and it's original to the board and if we can save it we will certainly uh, try and save it so see we've got there we go that's loose I think all the uh, the solder points are loose, and it's really just these components that have been added at the back here, which are holding it in um, holding it in place now. Let's have a look on the other side again. Just give them a quick whittle with the uh, pliers. That seems free. That seems free. That seems free. And that one seems free, yeah. So all the um, all the pins on the back there are now free. So it's just how this has been soldered in here. Um, so we've got. Let's see if we can take that choke off there. That coil, sorry. Again, all this solder is unfortunately horrifically. Um, degraded because of the corrosion damage but hopefully we can can we lift it from here yeah so we've got one pin which would have originally gone uh, through the board is actually uh, bent up there and it's connected to that coil there and to that, I think it's a diode underneath it. Now that, ah, here we go. Yeah, so we've got it off in fairly, fairly well in one piece there. Let me get you zoomed in so you can see a little bit better. Oops, no, other way. Get that on. Um, so, as you can see here. It's still fairly grim round there, but we've got the connector off. The connector doesn't actually look too terrible. I think that might clean up and we might be able to reuse that. That can fight well, that can go in the ultrasonic cleaner right right now. I may even leave that diode on there. I think it's a diode. It might be capacitive, but I think it's a diode. We can check it with a meter after anyway, but I'll do it. I'll zoom you out. I'll show you my ultrasonic cleaner. Now this is nothing fancy. Um, it wasn't really designed for electronics use, but um, it does do the job. And that's this thing here. It were only cheap. This I think it was about twenty odd quid, um, about twenty five quid or something like that when I bought it. And I've had it quite a few. Oops! Just kick the bucket. <coughs> Literally, not um, metaphorically. Right, um, what we will do, uh, I've got about half that filled with water there. Um, what this was really intended for is jewellery and watches and um, glasses and things like that. But um, like I said, I've, I've used this thing to clean um, injectors on diesel engines and stuff like that you know and it, it actually works quite well for things like that anything that's small enough to go in there 
carburetors for you know um, small engines, small engine carburetors. I've um, stripped down and cleaned them in this, um, and various bits of corrosion damage on electronics as well. So I've got that about 50% full of water, and we've got some of our um, distilled vinegar here. We will add a generous. amount of that, it's probably just under 50-50 that I mean you can do that, this stuff's dirt cheap, it's pence a bottle so um, I don't mind using it in something like this and then, to be honest you could probably filter it and reuse it but I can go down the drain when we're finished so we'll pop in the bits we want to um, clean close the lid, we'll set it to its maximum which is 480 cycles, I will set that going and this will probably make an absolutely horrendous noise on the camera, that's the only problem and that's basically the machine running now uh, while that runs um, I will do some more I will do some more clean up on the actual board here I'm sure that is actually going to really mess up the sound on here. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll do a little bit of clean up work on here. And we'll come back when this thing has run through its cycle and we can have a look what they come out like. And we can have a look what the actual board, state of the board is around here. So uh, back in a sec. Right, okay, the um, Ultra Science has gone through two cycles. And in that time I've managed to clear off this area here. I'll get you just zoom down a little bit so you can have a look at that. And apart from all this muck on there, it doesn't actually look too terrible. So what I'm basically going to do, I'm, I've just started now actually, I'm going to get everything else off this board. So literally at the moment what I am doing, come on, out you go. As I've just started desoldering um, the edge connector there so we can get a better look. And obviously I've got to get these resistors and them die and then um, LEDs and what have you off and then we should be able to really clean up that part of the board. I'll just do a couple of these and then I'll finish this off off camera and we can get that um, actually off the board. Um, but basically it's a case of putting your soldering on, let it flow and then sucking it away. And so far, this seems to be coming off fairly easily so I don't actually think the solder has got damaged on the back of this board here it's definitely on the other side of the board when I was trying to get um, some of them chokes off the board it was tricky the solder just was not um, it was not flowing at all and in fact one of them actually tried to scrape most of it away with a screwdriver but what I will do is that I will finish off Desolder in this here, and then we'll come back. I'm going to put the um, ultrasonic on another cycle, um, just give them another um, clean through, and then I'll take them out and we can have a look um, exactly what they look like. So, um, back as soon as that's done. Right, I've managed to remove all the solder quite easily actually from those. That was a lot easier than I was um, expecting. So, now all I'm doing now. I'm just going along with the flat of a screwdriver and I'm just making sure that every single one of these pins is actually indeed free to move and loose. So it's just a case of going along each one and just going on either side and giving it a quick wiggle and making sure the pin is actually free to free to move. Because sometimes even though all the solders out there they're just stuck by a little bit of solder to one side of the hole. If you just it's quite a pain painstaking process. It does take some time. I've been at this for this one socket probably about 20 minutes now. We've got one there we might have to just come back and have a look at. Oops. I think oh no that one's just come free. Sometimes they will just break free with a tiny little bit of force. Um what's that one? That one there I think we might just have to go in with the sold with the uh, desolder again. It's not feeling quite as loose as I wanted it to. Let's try that again now. No, let's go on there again. Sometimes you do actually have to 
add a little bit of uh, fresh solder. Yeah, that one's being a bit of a pain. We'll just add a little bit of fresh solder to that one and um, have another go. Especially when the solder's um, degraded like this has. Sometimes it just won't flow and the uh, best thing you can do add a bit of fresh new solder to it. Just go in again. I think that's got it this time. Let's just try with the uh, the thing again. There we go. That's free this time. That's free. That's free. That's free. We'll go down this side. That one's free. That's free. That's free. That's free. That one is. That one's stuck. And I've got one there that's stuck. Again, we'll just try. This is the first stop. Because I weren't quite sure which one of the two it was then, so I just did them both. That's free. That's free. That's free. So we got it. That's free. That one's stuck. Oh no. No, got that free. Yep. Yeah. That's free. Sometimes you do hear a little snap just as you push into them. As they'll free off. That's free. That's free. That one's free. That's free. That one is. That one is. That's just freed off there. That one's free. And that one's free. So basically we've freed off all them. I've just got to do basically exactly the same thing all the way up there. And then we'll come right back and we'll see if we can lift that um, edge connector off. Right, well, okay, I've been across all them, I've freed them all up, if we look, that is quite loose now, so it's just a case of very gently, there we go, that's it, very, very gently lifting it up, and we've got perhaps one pin there that's just being a little bit awkward on that end, let's just, there we go. I know the pin's free, it was just slightly stuck in the hole. No force there at all, so we can lift that off. Ugh. And that's the whole reason why we had to take that off. Let me get you zoomed down. Oops. There we go. That's the whole reason why we had to take that um, edge connector off. Look at this under here. You need to be able to get rid of all that corrosion there. Um, in fact, what I will do, um, I won't bother filming it because it's just more of the same, is I'll take that capacitor off, I'll get all these components off here, and then we can really look at seeing what we can do to um, clean the board up. So, uh, back in a sec. Right, okay. Now here we've got basically the strip main board. This is where we've taken all them components off. Um, I've Complete, just, everything's off here that needs to come off really I might take that capacitor off and um, replace it but those capacitors, all the parts around there are off uh, I've cleaned most of the um, holes up but um, there are still a few holes that need unblocking yet uh, but we need to get rid of all this this horrible corrosion that's on there and I have a feeling first thing, first port of call is going to be some more vinegar see if that can lift some of that rust because we're not just We've not just got like salt corrosion on here and the uh, electrolyte, we've actually got like ferric corrosion here which is staining the board. This has come off the legs of like that capacitor there because uh, the light, I mean, that actually just broke off. It was that corrode, you can see. And it's just the, the, the metal in these legs corroding out which has caused all this damage here. 
and vinegar does seem to be I don't actually think we've got um, an alkali on the board so much because I'm not seeing a lot of fizzing coming off it but this does seem to help um, lift the uh, the ferric oxide basically the rust um, off the board if we spread that out over the board like this I'm just spreading it all over where all the worst of the um, corrosion is and we'll help hopefully see if we can get this to help lift lift some well you can see it coming off on the um, q-tip already it is doing the job if you look there where there's that big pile of corrosion there it does help break it up and um, get it off the board do have to be a little bit careful when we're going over those pads because especially using something like a q-tip we don't want to um, snag a little bit of um, solder and pull a pad so we do have to be a little bit careful while we're doing this just gentle pressure and if you feel it snag stop right there we've got a pad there that's lifted in fact it looks like we've got a bit of corrosion damage there we're going to have to um, address before we put that um, ISA socket back just uh, just up there there's a pad that's actually uh, the trace has lifted off the board so I have to be super careful around that and it's literally where the um, the corrosion has atta attacked it to that point where it's um, it started to lift Right, what I'll do, I will carry on cleaning round like this because you can see what I'm doing that's the first q-tip there, we'll move on to a new one and I will come back as soon as I've got the um, the majority of this this corrosion off so as you can see it's just a case of work the vinegar in and just keep working at it and it does it does start coming off the board right there you can actually see the um, the silt screen on the board start coming back through where it had been basically disappeared by the amount of corrosion on it be super careful around there where there's that lifted um, trace. Right, I will be back as soon as I've got some more of this off, so uh, back very shortly. Right, we're back, and I've pretty much got about as much as I can off using just Q-tips and a little bit of IPA and uh, vinegar. So I'll, what we're going to need is something a little bit more aggressive to get some of this off. And what I'm going to try is this. What I've got is like a little Dremel style tool, I and mean, this is a B and Q cheapy I've had for years. Uh, but what I've got on the end of it, that is um, like a felt pad with um, a little bit of polishing. It's, that's basically jeweler's rouge on the end of it. It's what you use for polishing fine metals. And I'm going to have a go and see whether I can use that to take off some of this without doing any damage to the actual um, board. If this doesn't work we can go to something a little bit more aggressive but um, I want to see if this is going to do the job first so let's have a try let me turn the speed up a little bit now actually that is going to work it's going to take a while but if you look there where I've just cleaned it's not basically it's not harsh enough to actually dam it won't even damage the silt screen if you look if I even run over the silt screen it's not damaging the silt screen but what it is doing is taking all that ferric oxide and all that muck and rubbish off the board just 
do a little bit now and I'll shut this off because I'm sure anyone that's wearing headphones at the moment is screaming at me. Right. Just to give a quick idea what it can actually do. And again, it would take a tiny little bit of IPA. And wipe, in fact I've got a piece of cloth here. And wipe over that bit of board. There we go. We're pretty much back to um, how it should look there. So I will carry on and I'll do the rest of the board like that and then we'll come back and we'll have an inspection and see what it looks like. So back in a sec. Right, okay. Um, basically that's the end result. Um, I did it mostly with that there but I did, there was a few really, really, really stubborn bits of um, corrosion down there and just round where the LEDs had been there and I did resort to um, that just on a nice slow um, setting you know like that very 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 gentle and then just basically very 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 gently went over there and just I tried to avoid anywhere where like the edge connector was or anywhere where I could uh, risk lifting a trace but um, it did actually clean the vast majority of that corrosion off there I mean, as you can see on the board I won't say it's absolutely perfect, but it's like 99.9 .9 times better than it actually was uh, when we started this um, when we started this repair. So the next thing we need to do, let's get the um, we'll get the multi tester in. We're just going to use this as a continuity tester, so we won't, didn't necessarily have to use this. We could use anything that makes a buzz. And I've got my little um, fine tip probes. And they are fine tip and I've just jammed that into my finger and that hurt. Um, right, so let's, let's plug that in there. There we go. That's good enough. And put that off. Um, you'll be able to hear the beep. And all we need to do now is we need to start testing tracers. So like here, we've got a trace going from um, where that resistor needs to go back in to that um, point on the uh, power connector so that's an easy one we'll just go from there and that's good next one again that's good that's good and it's really going to be a case of just keep doing this uh, just going through all these obviously there'll be nothing there but we can go from there that's good that's good. Obviously, they won't be one to there. Um, let's see. We've got one from there that runs all the way up here. It runs along there. It runs all the way up here. So this is one that could have um, suffered to there. And yeah, as you see. So we've got a break there between that point there and that point there. We follow it down. Yeah, got quite obviously got quite a break in that somewhere. So we've got one there we need to rip up ah, and gone. We've got it there. With nothing there. So we've got a break after that point between there and that point there we've got a break. So we'll have to deal with that. Let's have a look at this other um, this other one here. Now we've got a. That's okay. That's okay. And that one comes all the way down to there. And that's okay. So f up to now we've just got one break in that one trace there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some time now going all the way over this board and I'll try and identify any traces which have indeed got a break on them like that and then we can sort that. Once we've got all them traces so we're happy we can actually start repopulating the board with components. We can put the ISA connector back on there. That's probably actually the first thing we'll do is uh, reinstate that ISA connector there and then we'll, like I said we can start uh, repopulating the board. I do still have a few of these that need um, unblocking, so I'll go ahead and do that. And um, we'll take it from there. So, um, 
Like I said, I'll spend about probably half an hour, an hour now, um, just checking all those, and I'll come back as soon as we've checked them all, and we can have a look at repairing the ones that need to be repaired. So, uh, back in a sec. Right, okay, well, I've inspected the board, I've gone all over it with the um, continuity tester here. And amazingly, I've not found that many actual um, issues. We've got, basically this is all what we've got to repair uh, trace-wise that I can find up to, up to now. We've got one trace that goes between there and there, that's broken. We've got another trace that goes between there and there, that's broken. And we have got another trace that goes between, um, I believe it's there and there, up off the, um, just up at the top there. Uh, that's broken. And then on the back, there is one trace right there. It's a tiny little trace off that pad there. Um, that's broken. Um, apart from that, I cannot find any other damaged traces on the entire board. That's literally it. So we've got, like I said, we've got one there that needs fixing. I'll just show you on the meter. So we'll put the meter on to continuity test. We've got our two probes here. So if I go on to that point there, let's get the board in a little bit further so you can see it. And that should go to this point here, up there. As you can see, we've got absolutely nothing there. However, if I come down, down the trace, we've got it there. We've come over here. We haven't got it. And basically, there's a little break, break about there, where uh, just about there, there's a break. Um, again, on this one, we've got absolutely nothing there. Um, yeah, this one here to that pin there. Again, we've got absolutely nothing there. On the other side, like I said, this is a really small one. Um, uh, from that via there to there, we've not got anything. But, however, if we continue the, it on to where it connects over here, that's fine. So it is literally just where um, it tees off to that via there. There's a tiny little break there that we'll have to sort out. And I'm absolutely amazed actually. I was expecting to find a lot more corrosion damage. The only thing which I'm slightly concerned about at the moment is I thought at first this was a two layer board. And then when I started looking at it further, I thought it must be a three layer board because you can't see through it. There's a, obviously a large ground plane or a, you know, a VCC plane inside the board. But it's more than that. It's at least four uh, layers in this board because we've got things like this capacitor here. We've got, two, um, we've got no traces coming off that side of that capacitor there. And if we flip the board over... We've got no, um, we've got no traces coming off it. So the traces on that are internal to the board. So this is definitely unfortunate. Like I said, I thought it was at first a two-layer board. Then I thought, oh no, it must have been at least three layers. But it has got to be at least like four layers. This board, for the fact that we haven't got a trace on the top of the um, of the uh, PCB, we haven't got a trace on the bottom of the PCB. But we do have, um, I think it's an electrolytic capacitor, or is that the electrolytic? One of those two is an electrolytic capacitor anyway. Um, I'll have to look at the, th the photographs um, I took of this when I was working on it um, before we can actually get that far. So, um, what to do next? Right, next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to patch these um, broken traces. And we'll do that with a little bit of um, coil wire. So we'll do some... Um, little repairs to this now and then we can get ready to start um, repopulating the board so I'll get the bits I need to um, repair these traces together and we'll be right back right I've got you zoomed in um, basically where the first repair is going to be or at least where I think the first repair is going to be and that's around about here because I can get continuity between there 
and the point over here just off camera uh, but no further than that so what I'm going to do first I'm just going to take the little Dremel tool um, look at warning for headphone users because uh, <laughs> this can get a bit loud but we'll uh, switch this on and we're just going to see if we can use this just to basically take away that's not quite aggressive enough what I was trying to do is just basically scrape away a little bit of that um, solder mask where I believe the wire is actually damaged we are going to unfortunately lose that 15 there because it's been printed over where uh, where I believe the damage is just scrape scrape that off so I think that is where um, where the damage actually is we can, try, we can test that with the continuity tester if I go on that point there Just make sure I get the continuity tester working again. There we go. So I've got it to there. But I'll come up. See, it's not. I can't get it anywhere over there. Put it there. Come along. Yeah, I can still get it there. So it isn't exactly where I thought it was. Um, all we can really do now is carry on exposing that um, that trace all the way along until we actually find where the break in it is. So it's just going to be a case of very gently I think it's here actually. Yeah. Basically, there is no copper left here. There's just no copper there. It's completely uh, been eaten away. But we do have, I think we have got good copper here. Yeah, we've got copper there. But that bit of copper there has just gone completely. There's nothing there. So let's scrape a little bit off from there. We know we've got good copper there, and we know we've got some good copper there. Let's get some solder. And where's my flux gone? There's my flux. We'll add a little bit of flux. It's a tiny touch, and a tiny touch over there. Clean my iron off. And we'll turn up them traces there, and we'll turn up what we've got there. In fact, I think we've got a yeah. I think we've got a break there actually. But basically, we've got a con contact there and a contact there. Now I'll take my uh, little piece of magnet wire, the coil wire, um, basically the same stuff, just a very thin enamel coated wire like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to scrape one end of it. Uh, let see if I can get this on camera. I don't really want to scrape on the board, that's the only thing. I can put it there, can't I? Um, and I need a little knife or something. I might be able to do it with the end of this. All I want to do really is just tease off um, some of the lacquer on the end of the wire. Now, technically this stuff is self-fluxing as in when you heat it, it's meant to just peel off. But I always like to just give it a little helping hand. Can you see how it's slightly shiny at the end there now? And get the iron in. Up 
first little bit of the uh, you can't see that can you you can see oops I'm melting my test leads right I just want to get a little bit of fresh solder just on the end of that wire and clean off the end of the soldering guy in now. Get this board so you can see what I'm doing. And all I want to do is lay that wire over that joint. Get that to solder into place. There we go, that's that's attached. Now what I want to try and do is basically follow the follow the path of the old um, the old wire. I'm trying to find what I've done with my tweezers and I'm not sure what I've done with them so I'll have to see if I can do it with these. But basically what I want to do is just hold that down there, bend it round. So it matches as good as we can the trace that we're trying to repair. I'm have to scrape a little bit of the and we'll tin that up and see if we can just solder that ever so gently into place there. This can be a little bit tricky to do. Add a little bit of fresh solder to where I scraped off on the uh, wire there. We'll hold it down. A little bit of solder. Let's see if that's taken. If that's taken, we can just break the extra bit of uh, wire off. Is that taken? I think we've got a tape. I think we've got a tape there. Right, what we can quickly do is just quickly check for continuity on that repair. So, if I go over there and I go to here, that's working. No, we're still. Right, we've got a. Basically, we've got a uh, repair from the via there up to there. But, oh, so we've got another break. Right, so we've got we've got two breaks. Um, we've basically got a break there, and we've also got a break somewhere down at the end there. Damn. Let's check from here to here. Nothing, nothing. See, we're good there. So we've got more than more than the one break, unfortunately. Right, let me let me um, let me strip off some more of the um, solder mask along along here, basically, and we're going to have to trust further along. We might actually have to run a wire right from there to there possibly. Um, I'd rather not do that if I can get away with it. I'd rather just do a little repair like this but uh, if needs must we may actually have to put a, um, a wire in from that via all the way over to there. Uh, right I will get something I can scrape some of this off with. Yeah it, it's well there is copper there but no, there's a big hole there. The copper's all rotted out there. We we'll look. Go on that via there. Well, that connection there. There we're good. We've got a break there. 
So no, just doing a little uh, localised repair on this one, unfortunately, like that's not going to work. We're going to have to run um, basically a bodge wire between that via there and where um, that choke, and I think that choke's not actually there, is it? Hmm. I'll have to refer back to the pictures, but I think that choke is one of the chokes which has been relocated um, elsewhere on the board, actually. Right, let's have a think. Um, yeah, best uh, our best option then, really, is we're going to have to run a wire all the way from there. I mean, we, I suppose we could do it with coil wire, but I think we might be better off just running a proper bodge wire on the back of the board from that point to that point there. That should uh, that should sort everything out. But that one's pretty bad then. And then we've got another one over there. From there, like I said, and that runs all the way up to a point up there. But I think that break is just localised just to here. It's where that capacitor um, had all rotted away. And we've got a little bit of damage around there that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, what I'll probably do, like I said, I was hoping I could fix that with a little um, with a little bodge wire, but obviously not. I'll just have the, another quick um, clean up of the board, and um, we'll come back and readdress this. So back in a sec. Oops. Uh, right, we're back. I've had a bit more of a clean up here, and it's quite obvious where the break is. We literally have a break between um, that through hole there and. Um, that piece of trace there because if I take the continuity tester and I go all the way up top of the board here where um, the other part of that trace is and I touch on here as you can see we've got continuity it's only when we get actually onto the pad there we haven't got it so this is an easy fix this one fortunately and what we will do in fact we can reuse that same piece of um, wire we had last time I'm just going to uh, scrape a little bit more of the uh, scrape a little bit more of the um, insulation off it. You can see it just goes shiny. You can't see it there, but believe me, it just basically goes shiny when you uh, scrape the varnish off it. Okay, that will work nicely. We've got a nice piece of wire there. And we need to tin up that trace there, like we did um, before. Basically, I'm going to do exactly like I did uh, just before, where we couldn't do it like that. So we'll add a little bit of flux on there. A bit of a um, bit of solder actually on the trace like that, just to tin it up. And we'll take our piece of. Uh, take our piece of coil wire just have to turn this round so I can see it a little bit better I'll try and zoom you in as well oops wrong way there we go you can see that quite well now and what the trick here is We take our piece of coil wire, we'll lay it across where we need to do the repair, oops, nearly had it then. to just sit down a little bit more basically I'm trying to get it to lie um, along that trace and solder into position as neat as we can I think that's got it yeah, lovely. 
So basically what we've got is we've got that wire soldered onto that um, trace there. Now what I'm going to do, I'll take the other end of it and I'm actually going to feed it very, very gently through the hole there. Pull it through. There we go. That's pulled through the hole there. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to put the capacitor uh, we need to replace back. Because that will hold that in place and then we can solder both um, parts in place. Obviously I'm not going to reuse that rusty old capacitor there. I've got, um, I've got a replacement here. I've had to uh, dress the legs a little bit to make it fit the PCB but it should work. And we will slide that in there like that. Make sure that that can go. There we go, that's in better. Get that side in. Make sure that's nice and flat down like that. We'll flip it over and we'll solder that into place. We'll spin that over. And the camera decides to zoom out on its own then. Does occasionally do slightly funny things. This um, and the remote stopped working again. Fun. It does occasionally do slightly funny things. This um, camera, but it's still uh, it's still a vast improvement. There we go. Stay there. Right. That looks pretty good. You can see what I'm doing now. So we've got the new component in there, and we've got this little piece of wire coming through. The same with the component. So let's. And solder that into position. That side there. That side there. Now we should be able to just break off that piece of wire there, like that. And we flip it back over. So you can see there's the uh, basically there's the repair. And we will know if it's worked if I take the uh, the probes here. Let's get. Oh, it helps if I switch the uh, meter back on. There we go. And if we go up here where that um, pin starts and we touch it on the leg of the capacitor, there we go. So that basically we've uh, we have reinstated that little break there, that connection. Um, I would say we could put a little bit of um, conformal coating or something on that but to be honest it's such a tiny little uh, repair I don't think it'll need it, I think it'll be absolutely fine. Um, we have also got between, let me get you zoomed out a bit. We have also got between that point there and that point there which I'm hoping it's going to be something the same and we've just got one little break that we can bridge with a um, with a wire and then obviously we're going to have to put a wire to replace between there and there because we actually have multiple breaks in that section there and I'd rather just run a wire as neat. We could actually do it on the back of the board to be honest, um, it probably be the easiest way of doing it to keep it looking neat is just to run a wire on the back of the board from that point to that point there, that should sort that out for us. Um, and that's really it for this side of the board, on the other side of the board we've got a little repair to do there. Um, literally where that via has come through, well it's where um, a component is connected there um, there's a little break at the edge of that via there but what I will do is I'll do that repair exactly the same as I've just shown with that repair where I solder it on and then when I put the component through on that position um, I'll pull the wire through and I'll solder the component uh, into position at the same time I just wanted to show that um, going in really today um, what I'll probably do is actually I'm probably going to leave the video 
here. I know you probably wanted to see this board all... Oops, sorry about that. Maxed out the uh, memory card, so I've had to just uh, swap cards out. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, um, so I basically I'm going to leave the video there. I know I'm leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger, but um, I've already this video is already go going to be quite long, as it is. And um, I think... Uh, I th <laughs> Anything over an hour gets a little bit too much, really, I think. So, uh, I'm trying to keep my videos not, you know, reasonable anyway. And you've already seen quite a lot of work that I've actually done on this board already. I mean, we've got one component back in there. We've still got the ISA connector there to put back on. All this to repopulate. And that's another reason why I'm, uh, I'm leaving the video here. Uh, I did have a look before and there's a few of the resistor values there I don't actually have in stock. The vast majority of the parts that I took off here that I want to replace, you know, like the capacitor stuff, I've got brand new ones in stock. But there's a few of the resistors up there, um, I just didn't have that value. I have ordered some. I don't want to put the original ones back on because, quite frankly, they're a mess. Uh, I don't know if you can make that out. They, amazingly, they actually all do read um, within spec, but they've got that much corrosion on them and rust, and I just don't want to reuse these uh, resistors, so I have ordered some uh, of the values that I didn't have. I have ordered some. They should be here within a day or two, and we can actually go ahead and we can repopulate all this part of the board. We can have a look at getting that connector there sorted out. Um, we can do some of the other little bits of repair. I might do some of the um, trace repairs off camera um, while I'm waiting for them other parts to come in. You've seen you've seen how it's done. You've seen how I repaired that one. Or how we put that cable in there even though, like I said, there's too many breaks in there to make it viable. We'll do something better on that side. Um, but that's basically where we're at. And all it's a case, all we can really do with this is check continuities, replace the parts and hope and pray that um, there's no internal damage inside the board because if there is it's got, it's pretty much um, game over for this. Um, like I, said, I was hoping this was um, just like a two layer board, a three layer board but it's not, it is a multi layer board, it's at least four layers and if that corrosion has got inside the board, it, like I said, that's it. Um, it's not really repairable. Fortunately we don't seem to have a huge amount of corrosion damage. Uh, it's actually cleaned up really, really well compared with what it looked like when we actually um, started this. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this little, um, this little, um, shall we say, instalment in the project. This is going to be quite a long-term thing to get going again. Um, once we've even got this sorted out, we've still got the power supply to fix, and then we've got the... Um, case to sort out as well before I can get this thing back to how it was pre um, pre battery leakage so I will say um, thanks for watching and goodbye